Hey y'all, welcome back to the studio. What is that green thing? We are hanging out and we are trying out our trimming chuck today. So if you don't know what a trimming chuck is, it is typically um, a form that you can bisque or leave in greenware state that you center in the in the center of your wheel and then you put your pots on top and it makes for quick trimming. So for example here, you would take a pot that needs to be trimmed and because you have a chuck already centered on your wheel, you are just taking the pot and trimming and then removing that, taking your new pot, putting it on here, trimming. It's a faster workflow for trimming and it also gives you access, let me put the right size here, it gives you access to your whole whole pot. You have access to the bottom. You're not bumping into the lugs that secure your chuck to the wheel. And you have access all the way to the top. This also gives you a really great way to reshape your rim or to keep your rim in the round. If you've ever um, applied pressure, putting lugs around your pot to secure it to the wheel and you've knocked your rim, if it's uh, a little wet or a little thin, out of round, it can be really frustrating. So this actually keeps your rims in round or puts them back into round um, once you've thrown them. So we have two sizes here. You can see we have an XL and we have a regular. This, um, this attachment, the wheel attachment bar here will take both of these sizes. We have multiple holes. And then we also have a third hole here for a Cindy, which is um just the inverse of a chuck we call it a cindy i actually don't know what the real name so chuck and cindy but that's the one where if you have a thin bottleneck you can put it in there so that would that is what the third hole is here so what i'm going to do is trim a couple of my pots here i think we're probably going to use mostly our xl today uh, so you can see how the system works and how easy it is okay so the first step for using our trimming chuck is um adhering the this rod to the wheel it's really easy you have two points of contact here we have these rubber rubber grommets in here that make it really easy to apply so what i find the easiest way is on a 10 inch bat system here um wheel head pin system is to apply push one of your corners down and then lining up your next one here and then putting pressure on there you are more than welcome to just go straight down from above to, I just find if I can get one in, it's a lot easier to um, get the second one in. So the beauty about this and why it's so quick and easy and efficient is that you are already centered. By putting this on your bat pins, you have already, you already have a set center point. So with our XL today, I'm going to go on the last set of notches here and that slides right on. So right away, my pot or my trimming chuck is absolutely centered here okay so you can leave it as is here i can trim like this there might be a little bit of uh, wiggle back and forth here so i take i still take three lugs of clay just like you would your normal um greenware or bisque chuck clay chuck and i do this and what this does is it just gives me a secure point so i can go through and trim all of my pots and I don't have to worry about this thing budging. Now you only have to do this step once, okay? So you apply it once, now you can go systematically and trim all of your pots. If I do need to switch sizes, I can just pop this off, pop my new size on, and then just resecure the lugs and I'm good to go. Okay, so our first pot here, I have a couple mugs. This one's a little drier, um, so I'll show you some varying, varying levels of dryness here. Um, this is thrown with one of our shaping ribs. In general, our shaping ribs provide, I call a no trim pot because it gives you really thin, even walls all the way top to bottom. And because I have my centering tool set to depth, this is already very thin on the bottom. So I'm going to show you how I can just finish this pot. I'll do a little bit of trimming on the side just for demonstration sake. So we have our XL uh, chuck right here. I'm going to take a little bit of water and what you want to do is just kind of create a uniform layer of water here. We are not adding so much water that our lugs are getting soggy, our clay is getting soggy. You just want to add enough that's going to create a suction. Now on a drier pot like this one, I will put just a little bit of moisture on the inside there. And my chuck is already centered. So centering this pot is really easy. I'm going to go over top, get an aerial view, and I'm going to do my best to get it centered before I apply any pressure to create a suction I want to make sure that my pot is centered 
So I have just a little bit of wiggle here. So I'm gonna make my adjustments. Okay, and that looks pretty good to me. Now at this point, I want this pot to stay in this position because I've centered it. So I'm going to support it from both sides and I'm going to tap downward, okay? Now, coming straight down, applying a little bit of pressure will keep your pot from bouncing out of the round, okay? So because my pot is a little dry here, I'm going to take my sponge. This is not a how to trim video. <laughs> um, I'm assuming at this point that you've trimmed a pot before. I can put out another video on a how to, but when your pot is a little bit on the drier side, it's not a terrible idea just to rehydrate. When you have your truck, your chuck on the wheel like this, you really do not need to have it spinning at a high velocity. So I'm gonna take my trimming tool here and you're gonna trim as normal now, okay? I'm going to take my hand, support the tool, support my pot, and I'm gonna bring my trimming tool in. Now for me, I know that I wanna have this little bevel here accentuated because I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna carve this pot. So. I would do all my trimming at this point. I really do have a thin bot, a quite thin bottom on here, so I'm not gonna take off a lot here, but I wanna show you that if you did, if you wanted to do your traditional foot down here, you could take it in and you could do that um, as you normally would, okay? And then if you had any thickness or bulkiness at the bottom, you can see I can extend my tool beyond the lip. If it was secure to the wheel head, I would be hitting my clay lugs right now. Even if you use just water to adhere your pot to the wheel, on a drier pot, um, it's easy to just lose that suction. I've had pots fly off the wheel too many times to count. So you kind of, you're on limited time when you're suctioning your work straight to the wheel head. But like this, I know my pot is staying nice and round. I know I have access. I can come and I can trim the full length. I know I'm not taking off a lot here, you guys. Really, I don't have a lot to take off. So I'm just giving you a demo here. And then if I wanted to do any work on my rim, at this point, if I wanted to add in any decorative lines, I could do that. I usually do this at the point of throwing because we have our shaping ribs that give this nice even texture. But if you decided that at this point you wanted to do something like that, this would be the time to do it. So I'm gonna make sure I'm nice and straight up through the sides. Oops, I grabbed a little bit more. Okay, so I've got my design elements. I'm feeling good about this. I'm gonna come through with my sponge make sure everything's nice and finished, especially these deeper grooves that I created over here. I'm going to for sure address my rim because I have plenty of access to that there. Bring this up. And then I always finish with my red rib, okay? So at this point, you are just trimming as normal. The tool is working for you. I'm gonna come over top, make sure I have everything nice and smoothed over. Both of my clay bodies that I use have grog. So at this point, I really like to lay all that down. At this point, I take my maker's mark and I can put it, I usually go closer to the rim. That's where I am the thickest. And then I pop my maker's mark in there. And then to remove it, I'm just going to twist gently like this. And you can feel it when, remove, when it um, comes off. So now we have a nice round rim. We have no dents from where the lugs were. I've got any detail that I wanted to put in there. I'm nice and trimmed, got my maker's mark, and we have a beautifully trimmed pot. So I'm going to go on and I'll trim my next one so you can see how it works again, okay? I'll set this one off to the side and we'll grab the next one. Here's a similar shape here, a little bit wider at the top. I'm going to come through. My first step here is going to be to wet this. Okay, now we got a little slip on there. These are a little bit dry, like I said, so I'm gonna hit the inside with a little bit of water, and then I'm coming over top. I'm going to do my best to get this centered. I'm gonna spin it slowly, and I can see that I am not centered, so I'm going to just continue to adjust. If you use our rim cones at the throwing stage, you should have a really even round rim okay that makes a difference if your rim is crooked on here 
course, this is gonna give me trouble. If your rim is crooked, that could create some issues. So you do wanna make sure that you have a relatively level pot uh, before you get on. So now I am centered enough. It's never gonna be perfect, it's good enough for me. So I'm going to hold my pot and I'm hitting it with just some downward taps. All we're doing here is creating that suction here, okay? We are not cracking, I'm not pushing so hard that this pot cracks. If your pot is way too dry to trim, you will crack it, like that's a good indicator. Um, I'm just a little bit past leather hard today. Um, I homeschool my kids, so my intention was to get in here this morning with these pots, and then I was like, surprise, we went roller skating instead. So, okay, now I've got my pot all secured on. That feels nice and centered for me. I'm gonna go at like a low, low medium speed, no need to really crank. And I'm gonna come in here. I know I want to carve my, my design, my fluting into my foot. So I wanna put in that steep angle for myself. Okay. And then I can see that I have a little bit of a thicker spot there. Please don't be like me. Trim your pots when they are the appropriate wetness, okay? This is strictly for demonstrations. This is not a trimming tutorial, okay? And if you've never trimmed a pot this dry before, good for you, I'm proud of you. Okay, so I've got that evened out, so now I can put my foot back in where I'm gonna do my carving. And then I'm going to, like I said, I don't leave a lot of thickness on my bottoms. So I'm just going to come over the top lightly. I'm just showing you how you would use the trimming chuck in this instance if you wanted to put a foot or clean this foot up, okay? So that would be that. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna make sure my rim is nice. I put three lines in that other one, so I'm gonna do the same here. One, two, three. I have full access to the bottom here. Okay, I'm gonna even that out. Awful, awful sound, I'm gonna come up. And then I'm going to continue with my finishing, okay? I'm going to come through with my sponge. I'm gonna really treat my rim here get these grooves nice and smoothed out, get that grog laid back in. I'm gonna come up the length of my pot here. And you can see, I am not running this wheel at full speed, not even close, okay? This is a slow and steady trimming process. You do not want, because this mug is not really adhered with anything much more than just the suction of the water. So if you really start cranking on this thing, it's easy, you can, you can knock it off, okay? So we don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna come through, lay down all my grog, get my side nice and smooth, get my top taken care of. Okay, gonna make sure my lip is smoothed out, all my finishing work. If you guys have watched my videos before, you know that I do most of my finishing work at the throwing stage. So this is honestly way more than I would do at this stage. Whoops. And if that happens, just slow your wheel down. I already, I came, I knocked it off, but honestly I'm done. So I'm just gonna come and twist it the rest of the way. And now we have a nice round pot here. If you have any markings on the inside, just come through, smooth that out, okay? And now we have, whoops, we forgot our maker's mark. We pop that back on. Okay, now we got the maker's mark. Okay, beautiful, just nice trim pot. All right, let's keep going, we'll do a few more. And then I've got to get my handles on. Although it looks like we are getting down to more wet. Now we're getting to uh, some pots that are a little bit wet. So because I use our shaping rib, my pots are pretty thin, okay? So this is what it looks like here. And I add in this element with my, my shark fin um, shaping tool, our foot tool. At this point, usually what I do is I just come in and carve this through. This is finished enough for me. This is how my pots come off of the bat. Because I use the wheel, they're already really finished. But for today, I will come on and I will show you the trimming, how you would do it on the chuck. So we have already applied or attached our chuck to the wheel. And you can see how fast this process is because you are already having a centered point. So you are not having to find center every time. So I know that my chuck is centered, so I just need to center this. I'd love to hear how you center. Do you tap center? I've been practicing. I am getting better. I do feel like I am getting better. And if you start to suction before you're ready for it, you can just kind of tap it with your hand. So now that's a good position. I'm gonna take my palm, dry palm, 
and I'm gonna go downward, okay? And create that suction around here. Again, I'm gonna mind my speed. That felt just a little fast for me. Take my trimming tool, come through here. And technically, because I already had my design element started in there, I'm coming through and I'm erasing what I did on the wheel, which is okay. Even this, I can tell I'm going just a little too fast, okay? You wanna keep it a nice, consistent speed. And I'm gonna lay in my foot area here. That's where I'll do my fluting. I would come over top. You can come and do whatever foot. I'm pretty thin on this one, so I'm not gonna take not gonna take a lot off here, okay? I'm gonna show you just how that would look if I was coming over the top. And then if I wanted to do some detailing here on these big ones, I'm not gonna put a design element around the bottom. Take my wet sponge. I have a white finishing sponge around here that I like to use because it doesn't bring up as much grog. But today I'll, I'll use my throwing sponge. So you can see I have full access because I'm not even close to the lugs down here. So I can come here, get my rim nice and smooth, come through with my finger because that's how, it's a really great way to lay your grog back down over top, looking lovely. I will grab my red, rib burnish this however you're finishing whatever your finishing flow is do that okay this is when i used to trim my the feet on my mugs all the time uh, years ago this is just kind of the flow that i had there i'd sponge red rib and then maker's mark and then off i went but i can tell you this is so much quicker with the chuck for me and then i have another opportunity to get my rim in a beautiful round. So that looks good to me. Take my maker's mark, come in here, rock my mark in here. And then to remove, I'm gonna take two hands. And sometimes you have to just kind of twist one way and then really quick back the other way, okay? So there we go. Nice round rim still. And then we have a beautifully trimmed mug. Why don't we do one more together? Let's do a picture. So this will give you an idea of what I have going on here. So I have a pretty thin rim here. I did that on purpose because I knew I wanted this really wide, thin spout. Now this is something that would be a little difficult for me to trim right on the wheel head because of the spout. And because of how thin this rim is here, you can see it's just super thin at the end. Adding lugs and pushing that pressure on there I could crack that or I could distort this rim. And I have, I've done that a million times. So having my chuck here ready, and you can see, I'll let you know, this I used shaping rib. I think I used maybe this one, number 12 on the bottom there. And then I left this really wide bottom and then I also used my shark fin on this one so you can see to get that really splayed out base. So I've got just a little bit of trimming to do here. My bottom is pretty thin. So again, I'm not gonna do too much work on there. So I'm going to add water onto the chuck. This is the XL. So I'm going to put this on carefully because I do have a thin rim, okay? There we go. And now what I've noticed is when I am trimming pictures like this, I get more of a wobble because I have more of an uneven surface. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm almost spot on. Petal that I was working with, I wouldn't have to remove my hands completely. Okay, that looks good to me. So now we've got mind our spout there and I'm gonna put some downward pressure. Again, I know how thin this rim is. I'm not cranking on this, okay? I don't wanna lose this pot for my dem demonstration here. So you can trim really delicate pots a lot easier this way. So I'm gonna come through with my sponge and I'm going to just, I could honestly, because I, I finish my pots at the wet stage when I'm throwing, 
I could just get away with sponging this and it would be completely finished. It is very light. My walls are really thin and even because I use my shaping ribs for that. But for you all today, I'm going to come in and I'll take just a little bit off the sides here, okay? So applying a good amount of pressure. I'm able to get that really crisp line there. And I'm gonna come in, I will trim fluting around that edge. And then I'm going to come in and I can't really do much besides sponging, but I'm gonna come in right through here. I'm gonna just switch my trimming tool here. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna trim right up this curvature here. But I don't wanna eliminate the, um, the lines that I put in with my shaping rib. So I'm just gonna come down through here and then I'm gonna take my metal rib, if I can find that. I'll take a death rib and I will come and finish trimming here. If you have not used this rib for trimming, you should try it because it really is a great way just to get rid of that excess there. It's thin enough to take a lot of clay off, but it's also really flexible so you can come in and really shape that, okay? So that feels fine for me. I'll come in with the sponge, come in with my red rib, get rid of any lines that I left there. I'm not gonna go over the top. My bottom is plenty thin here and it is beautifully flat, so I don't want to mess that up. And come in here. I can treat my rim here, see my spout. I have full access and that's not gonna harm anything because it's just a wet sponge. I'm gonna come in, make sure my grooves are nice and smooth. And then I'm going to come in with my red rib down to the bottom. I like to let my finger slide over the spout so I know where my starting point is. And then I can come all the way up and lay in all those lines flat there. I don't wanna lose my texture because I have uh, some throwing lines and things like that. I wanna keep, do my side, burnish my top. All right. I'm gonna do my maker's mark and then we are good to go. And that is how you trim a pitcher, anything with a spout. And I rocked it a little bit out of center, but it doesn't matter at this point because my trimming is done, okay? I'm gonna just slide this way and there's my bottom. Here's my pitcher, you can see I'm still nice and round there. And that is how you trim a pitcher on our XL trimming chuck. So now we have trimmed four pots on here. I hope that is helpful. I hope you can see um, how quick and easy it is to use a trimming chuck if you've never used one before. It is a beautiful tool to have and ours is durable. You never have to replace it. We have the two sizes available for you, XL and the regular. Um, it's just a really great way to assist you in trimming and a really great way to preserve your rim and to give you full access to your pot top to bottom. Thanks for stopping by. Let us know if you have any questions. You can find our trimming chuck under our tool section on our website. We'll see ya.